what's up and welcome to Motion RC Live. I'm your product specialist Wes and we're doing something a little bit different tonight. We're just going to go live and have a little fun chatting with you. Miss Lori is over behind the camera right now and she's going to be uh, monitoring your comments. If there's something that you guys want to know, let us know. Lori will definitely relay the message to me. Uh, well, like I said, we're just trying something new. We're in the new shop tonight. So we're, we're just kind of testing out some of our equipment, making sure everything's working and excellent for you. So hopefully, uh, leave us some comments down there and let us know. Can you hear us good? Can you see us good? Is it all good? And uh, we're going to be doing a couple unboxings tonight, playing with some of our uh, awesome toys, as you guys are always used to here at Motion RC. I, I actually have one sitting here in front of me that just came in today, and I've been playing with it a little bit. This is our... Uh, Kyosho Mini Z line. Uh, I got the little Dodge Charger uh, drift car. Comes with the hard plastic tires. Been having a lot of fun with this. Can't wait to get a video out on it. But yeah, we're going to check out some of these different toys tonight. We're going to take out the F-14. And uh, I'm excited. I'm, it's one of the few motion RC airplanes I've never had a chance to fly. I've seen it at shows and things and always wanted it. And I just haven't had a chance. And now that I'm here... Working for Motion RC, I was like, I gotta have one. Let's do this. So, yeah, we're gonna get that out here in just a minute. How's everybody doing tonight? I mean, Lori, have you seen anybody popping in, saying hi? Do we have hey, any of our normal faces? There's a couple of guys. See in a here. Victor Shamulus in here. Hey, welcome, Victor. Stephen Thomas is in here. Victor Shamulus, Chuck Wicker, Send It RC. Send It RC. I love that name for an RC channel. Send It. Nick Funero <laughs> and Craig Craig Vigo. Awesome. Well, I'm glad I see comments popping, so I think everybody can see us and hear us tonight. Uh, as people are getting in, let me spin around here. Let's grab one of these uh, other cars. I just got these in today. Let's pop one out and take a look at this. Like I said, we will get to the F-14 here in a minute, but hey, while we're here, let's check out some of this other stuff. So these are WL Toys uh, drift cars. So I'm into these drift cars right now. So I've got this one, and uh, I've got... A couple of our drift cars and I've been wanting to try this so let's pop one of these open real quick and just check it out right first impressions I haven't got a really chance to look at these yet we're gonna look at them together all right oh man look at that it even has little body clips <laughs> oh, let's see grab me a cutter and let's check some of this stuff out yeah so this is something I kind of want to do a little more often with you guys it's just uh Hanging out here in the shop in the evening, you know, we're always going to have our real polished Friday shows uh, that we do the once a month, but I want to be able to come and hang out with you guys and just check out some of these products when I get them in. It's kind of nice to rip them open and hang out, show them to you live here. up Mr. Diecast Review. I am having an awesome time. We're playing with RC stuff as always here and uh, I can't complain man. Let's see here. We're going to snip. We got two zip ties in the bottom here. I'm going to snip those open real quick and take a look at this. Get it out of the box. Let's see. I think I got to pull the body off first. Let me pull the clips. It looks like the zip tie is wrapped around on the inside of this little guy. Oh. There it is. Hey, look at that. The little body comes up. Wow, this is nice. All right. Let's everything out of the box. <laughs> hey, Miss Lori, can you jump behind the camera real quick? So I got the body off of this, and this is impressive. Look at this little thing. Let's see if she can zoom in on this real quick. And uh, let's take a look at this. So I'm going to try and keep it right here, Lori. And uh, are you zoomed in? Yeah. I can't see what's going on right now. Um, okay, so check it out. This actually has a full suspension on it. Look at that. All the way around. It's got a very nice metal chassis on it. This is the little WL Toys uh, uh, drift car. And I'm just checking it out here before we get this going. But, I mean, look at how nice the quality of this little guy is. And I did check before we got live, these are in stock right now, so if you are interested in it, it's four-wheel drive. As you can see, when I spin one wheel, they all spin. There you go. 
and uh, comes with the included battery. You've got a little pin to get your battery in and out. There's a little tray to hold it here, which that is slick. Uh, very cool. Looks like a little brushed motor here. It looks like a slot car motor, actually. I do slot cars a lot, and this looks just like one of the little motors we use for our slot cars. Very cool. And uh, it looks like a built-in ESC and receiver right on top. But I just, I had this. I wanted to pull it open and check it out. Let's see. That goes like that. Maybe. I'm surprised how heavy this is. This little car is heavy. Um... Now, I do need to charge a battery up. I just wanted to pop this open while we were all here and hanging out. Uh, I doubt it would fire up right now and go flying across the room. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, look at. look at that thing, though. This is cool. So, me and Lori are planning this week. We're going to set up a little track here in the new shop and uh, rip these guys around in here and have a good time. But, yeah, look at that. Got a body clips. I can't work. Aha. So this little car actually has hard plastic wheels that uh, let it slide, as you can see. So you can drift king it. Look at that. So we'll definitely fire that up and get a video of it this week coming up. All right, let's back it up, Lori. Let's get into this uh, F14. We were just hanging out. I had that just come in today. I wanted to check it out. But uh, for now, let's get this over on the table. Oh, another thing I got. I bought this for Skip. Y'all know my little kid. And uh, I saw we had these Top Gun, officially licensed Top Gun uh, F-14s in our Kobe line. And I was like, oh, I got to get one of these for Skip. So I definitely picked one of them up. I thought that was too cool. So we can maybe build an F-14 with Skip, too. So let me grab this off the table over here and get to the pot you all want. Oh, that's a box right there. Man. So I'm super excited, like I said. I peeked in it just to make sure everything made it here okay. And uh, everything looked good. But you're going to be seeing the unboxing with me for the most part. I haven't unbagged any of it or anything. So we're going to see how this comes out just like it is. Woo! Oh, baby. Oh, baby. So we get our manual right off the top, right there on the top. Uh, you get your warning that just says that you've got your 30-day warranty right there on the front. Make sure you unbox your models as soon as you get it and go through them so that you can... Oh, by the way, I just found this. I guess it fell out of the box when I took it open. So I guess that little WL2 car that we unboxed does come with a charger. It's right here. But anyway, make sure... On your uh, airplanes, when you get them from us, open the box up. Check out your airplane right when you get it. Just make sure there's nothing wrong from shipping. Uh, we try and pack them as best as we can. Hey, we've had a request for a close-up for Joe on the show. <laughs> close-up of Joe on the show? Yeah. So, if you've ever noticed it, so all the live shows we've been in since we came to Motion RC, we hide this little guy in the background <laughs> just to be funny. And we always hide him in, like, an exhaust tube or something. But uh, he's a little pilot that I had in one of my airplanes, and he's looking for a new home. I think he might end up in the P-47 in time. But, uh, yeah, the little G.I. Joe guy. <laughs> he always hangs out somewhere behind us when we're live and having a good time. So I'm going to start cutting the F-14 out of everything carefully here. Let's see, we got a baggie of parts right there on top. Uh, looks like your elevator uh, push rods. Uh, we got another baggie over here. This one's got your uh, tube of glue. Most of our free wing models come with that now. Uh, and some uh, different pieces. This is the ventral fins for the bottom of the uh, intakes. And look at all the little pieces. Canopy latch. Interesting. Let's see here. Get on in a little bit further. Like I said, Lori is monitoring it. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to ask tonight. That's the whole goal when I'm live like this. Uh, we can kind of hang out with you guys, our customers, and answer questions within reason. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I forget how big this airplane is. Let's see. Do I, am I free now? 
Lots of cutting around in here. Alright, I think I have the main fuse open. We'll get it out. Oh, nope, missed some tape. Oh, I got it. Oh, this part's heavy. Woohoo! There we go. Set my pocket knife down for a second. There's the main fuselage. I'm going to set this off to the side. We're going to unbox the bag here momentarily. Let me get the rest of this stuff out of the white box, though, so we can get that out of here. Spin it around, check all the rest of these tops. There's another parts bin. Definitely make sure you're checking all the little crevices on this airplane. It looks like there's quite a few parts and pieces to go along with this one. Is this question asking if there's any hope for a upgraded pilot system in the future? Well, uh, I can't officially answer that. So somebody's asking if there's any plans of upgrading the power system in this. But, you know, uh, it's always our goal to continue to... Uh, upgrade and modify these airplanes to make them better and better as time goes on. So, you know, it could definitely be something that happens in the future, for sure. Keep an eye out. Uh, is all I can tell you right now. Keep an eye out. Let's see, just making sure. I would double check because I'm bad about throwing these away and then having a piece in there. I've learned my lesson the hard way on that. All right, uh, we've got the canopy next. And Lori, I don't know if you want to spin around and uh, maybe zoom in on this. Is that, can you put me up on that screen so I can see it again? Okay. Please. <laughs> I'm trying to keep an eye to make sure I'm actually holding this thing in frame for you. Uh, here we go. So Lori's going to zoom us in real quick. Give you all a look at this. The canopy in the F-14 is actually really well appointed. Let's see. Can they see the dash? Can you zoom in? Yeah, there you go. You can see it, it actually has all the instrument cluster inside. Uh, very well appointed, oop, oop, there we go, on that canopy on the F-14. Love the HUD, the green HUD there. Really looks good. I like the pilots they use in the F-14 also. All right, cool. So there's that part. Nice and close. I'm going to try my best to put this together tonight live with you guys, but uh, I know this one's one of our more complicated assemblies. There's a lot to the F-14. So we have the uh, rudders now, and we'll get some close-up shots of this stuff as we get them out of the package. Like I said, I'm just trying to get rid of this box at the moment. Uh, looks like we have our elevators right here, all prepackaged. Got our other rudder. Kind of thinking about doing a Jolly Roger scheme on mine. I always love that paint job. We have our wing halves. And there's some cool stuff here. When we get this uh, out of the package, I'll get Lori to zoom in on this, but we have ball bearings for the uh, wings to rotate on. Uh, very cool. And I think I'm going to be setting mine up. Uh, our buddy Chris Wolf, the RC geek, has a great video on how to set up the full uh, length ailerons and then tail ailerons uh, on the F-14. And I think I'm going to set mine up the same way. If y'all have been interested in that, though, uh, Chris Wolf has a great video series on that. And, of course, he has some awesome ones on refinishing the F-14 also that I've seen. So definitely go check him out if you haven't. The RC geek, he has some... Fantastic videos over on his channel. So we have the nose section of the airplane. Right there. Almost done with all the parts and pieces here. Let's just make sure we don't forget anything. Remember to check all your little crevices. We have a nose cone. And I believe that's everything out of the box, and we can get that out of our way. And then always check the bottom, too, because sometimes there's parts on the bottom. All right, we're going to throw that off to the side. And let's actually start getting these parts and pieces out of the bags now.
laid out on the table and check it out. So we'll start with the big one. This is our fuselage, main section here. So, question. Okay. Is this the same 80 millimeter jet that was released seven years ago? It's not much the difference. Uh, it is, but it has been updated over time with different power systems and things. Um, it's still the same mold, uh, but like we said, they're always getting upgrades to them and running changes as they go to make the jets better and better. But yes, this one has been around for a while. But that doesn't mean it's bad. The reason they keep selling and that guys love these airplanes is because they were designed to be flown for long periods of time. The other nice thing is when we bring out an airplane, it sticks around for a long time and we keep providing parts for it. So that's the other nice thing. There is the fuselage right there. It looks beautiful. There's the bottom of it. You can see all the vents on the bottom. I believe that's where the ESCs are setting in this airplane. Yep, you can see them back there in the back section. So that's for cooling of your ESCs. And then you have two cheater holes, one on each side for the fans. Give you a shot up that. There's the fans. Now, like I said, I know there is a lot of wiring in this airplane, so I don't know that we'll get it all done tonight live. Uh, I'm going to hang out with you guys for about an hour here, just kind of show you around the airplane. There's the nose cone. It shouldn't be too bad, though. It's amazing to me how they can take a complex jet like this now and uh, make them go together so easily. There's that finish on the uh, rudder. You got the any on one side, and then the Northrop Grumman, Grumman, excuse me, on the other side. And this airplane is full of lights too. You can see there's the lights up here, lights on the back, lights on the top of the fuselage, lights everywhere on this airplane. Uh, I've seen several of them fly at Joe Nall with afterburners in them and everything. And they always look great in the uh, evening sunset. Same thing on the other side. It's all the first one, but I'm just getting it all unboxed real quick so that we have it ready to go. Let's get those wings out. Let me see if I can hold this up here and show you this. So this is my first time seeing one up close coming out of the box. And you, this hardware here is normally hidden when you look at it out at the field, but as you can see right there is a ball bearing that that pivots on when the wings sweep back and forth. And there's the bottom of the wing. Try and get that without the seal with the light. The light's kind of weird right there. Very nice. Here I have the other one. Looks just like the other one, but we're gonna get it out of the bag. So we're ready to go. Very cool. And as we're going here, let us know if this is something you're into, guys. Me coming on here uh, just with a product when I get it, hanging out. This is as real as it gets. I'm taking one out of the box just like you guys would be. If this is something y'all are into, though, let me know. Uh, we got the new shop set up to where this is easy to do now. So there's the front of the fuselage. Let's see here. The nose cone's laying here somewhere right there. Just want to magnet that on. Go. There's the front of the fuse, and that is a magnetic nose cone. Large airplane, very large airplane, when it gets all put together. All right, I got to read the manual on this one. This one's not normally a, a four screwer, so I got to make sure I put this one together right with you. No shame in needing to look at the uh, manual. Okay, it says our first step is to get our nose put on. So, there was this white piece that goes up on the front. It's like a piece of, uh, like a radar equipment or something. I believe it is this one. Looks like it. Take a peek here. Yes. I believe it is that right there. 
not 100% sure what that piece is. Hmm. Learned something new. Didn't know that was on the F-14 right there. So that piece is going to go in there as our first step. We're going to get some glue ready here in just a second. And we're going to put that on. Uh, and then we glue the front half to the back half. So let me grab my new tube of glue that's sitting right here beside me. I like this stuff too. This is the glue that comes in all of our kits. It's the uh, uh, King Boxer something. Anyway, it's just the glue that comes with our free wing jets whenever you buy it. I keep this. I got tons of it over there in a drawer. <laughs> it's good stuff. So let's get our uh, little piece here put on. I'm going to go and slide that back out of the way. How's it going, Lori? Anybody saying anything? Uh, you were telling me that piece is for coolant. Oh, okay, yeah. So I noticed it, it's hollow. I wonder what it is on the real airplane. So this is actually a cooling vent on this airplane. Uh, you can see there's actually a hole right there and a hole in the front to help scoop some air in. But I wonder what it is on the real airplane. I'm going to take and put a little bit of this a glue. I mean, that, everybody looks like they already know what it looks like. Cool. So I'm just going to put a little bit of thin glue right here around the outside of this. And then uh, slide it up in there. Yeah, I was trying a little bit later, too, for the guys that don't get to come to our shows on Fridays during the day because of work. So that's why I was giving this a shot a little later in the afternoon. So there's that, all glued in. Now our next piece is to put the front and the aft section together. Let's see, am I on camera? Cool. So it has these two carbon spars right here, and uh, I'm probably going to lather them up a little bit with some glue, and then we're going to put glue all around the outside here, and then slide the hash together. Now before we put it together, it's always a good thing to double check it, and let's test fit it. One, get the two little ends in. Uh -huh. Now we're going to take and slide these halves together and make sure everything fits good as it does. Uh, I am going to go on and pull this battery tray out. What's up? Something uh, funny? Uh, slide my part so you could, ah, oh, you gotta slide it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. That that is for an SLIR sensor. Oh, okay, cool. So I'm going to take, this is the battery bay. There was only one screw holding this tray in here. I'm going to go ahead and pop this out of my way. It doesn't say to do this in instructions, but I can already tell it's going to make my life a whole lot easier down inside the airplane real quick when I'm gluing this together. So let me hold this up real quick. This thing's big and heavy. So you can see right here, what I'm doing is just making sure my fitment, I don't have any wires, nothing getting pinched in here. I'm test fitting it, sliding it together before we glue anything. Uh, we want to make sure that everything's going to fit good. And it does. So I'm going to set that back down. I'm going to slide my half back out. And I'm going to take my glue now and just go on and put that around everywhere in here. Now I'm going to take a little bit and put it on the carbon rods. Before we slide those in, so that it's stuck in there real good. Get a little bit of glue here. Now, with this glue, if you take it, stick it together, and then pull it back apart, it'll get real stringy. Now, I'm going to make sure the stringies are all over my hand, so I'm going to make sure I get them off before I touch the airplane again. Now, we're going to slide this together and get a good fit in here. Now, something I can see is when I put this in here, the, uh, I'll show you here, the halves actually need to be pulled out just a little bit while we're sticking that. So there's a little bit of a gap on both sides. I'm sure it wouldn't hurt anything. This is the part that's going to make it a little bit more challenging to put this whole airplane together tonight, uh, just on the show, is getting... I've got to get all that butted up and flat and have this fuselage set for a little bit until this gets stuck. Now, what we can do real quick to help us is go on and slide that back out. And there's string 
coming off all the glue right now. This, this glue really activates well with air. And what we want to do is go back and forth a few times and get those stringies going just like that. Now another thing we can do to kind of cheat, if you have it, and I do, uh, can you hand me that bottle of CA right there? I'm going to take a little drop of thin CA, and this is because we're building it live. If we weren't building it live, I would just let this set up, but uh, in the meantime, CA doesn't hurt this airplane at all. What I'm going to do is okay. take uh, the corners of where this is meeting, and there's a gap at, I don't want that gap. I want this to be nice and tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this CA after I'm 100% sure that everything is seated. Let me look at the bottom of the airplane real quick. Take your time with this kind of stuff, guys. Yeah, okay, good. That's nice and seated. And I'm going to take a little drop of this CA so I don't have to sit here and hold this the whole time. I'm going to push that up against there. And give it a drop. A little bit of thin will just wick right in there. We're going to hold this for a couple seconds until it sets off. Then we can do the other side, flip the airplane over and glue the bottom part. And this will just hold it nice and tight while we're assembling it tonight where we don't have to worry about that as we go. There we go, that's set off and it's nice and stuck now. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now. Just a little thin drop in there. Now this is completely optional. You could totally do this all with this glue. It's just going to take a little bit longer. And like I said, tonight we're just trying to get this assembled for the most part uh, with you guys. There's a lot of wiring and things that I'm not going to bore you with as we put this together. Um, there we go, that's set off. Oops, I didn't get the other side good enough. I didn't hold it long enough. Yeah. Any other comments come in thus far? Season of dressing? Mm, no, not, not that thing you did with the other Cool. Well, let us know, guys. Is this something you enjoy? Something y'all want us to continue doing? I mean, I get models in all the time that we can come on here and hang out with you. Uh, check them out live. Answer any questions you have on them. We're allowed to talk about that right now? Like how much talk about that right now? Like, like talk about it, talk about it? Hang on, we're trying to figure something out here. Like are we allowed to show can, that? I can show you pictures. Ah, you want something sneaky sneaky tonight. Look at this, you are gonna be the first guys to see this. So speaking of airplanes mm -hmm. that can be upgraded uh, and refreshed, we're going to pop something on the screen real quick here for you. So, I don't have it personally right now. James has this, but this is the version 2 and updated 64mm Panther. This is coming to Motion RC. I'm not sure that these have hit the website just yet. They are live. They are live. Okay, so I guess they just went live. So, if you're looking for a brand new jet, that's an old classic around here that upgraded. Look at that, James flying it. The 64 millimeter Panther got a new paint scheme and some updates to it. So I don't have it in front of me. I haven't had a chance to really see it. There you go. There it is live and on the website right now if you want one. The 64 millimeter Panther is officially getting an update and a repaint. Look at old James. Man, that's a good looking paint job too. I love the old paint job on the airplane too. The yellow wings uh, was always really cool, but uh, I love the dark blue. Man, I love the yellow stripe on the nose too. That looks really good. Very cool. So I can't wait to see that. I know James has been out working on filming that this week. I've been working on something myself. And uh, it's super exciting. Uh, there's an updated airplane. So what do we got? We got some thumbs up. We got some thumbs up. Sweet. 
you know, it's not a new release. It is the same as the one we had before. It's got a new paint job, and I think there was a couple other changes on it. I haven't had a chance to look at it super closely yet. I don't have one here in the shop. James has got that one right now, and he's working through it. But, uh, yeah, hey, like we said, we're always updating stuff, so could happen. You never know. All right, so I've got that glued on good. I'm going to flip the airplane over. Uh, this is something I personally love to use. This is just an old piece of foam. Come, it came in an airplane. I don't remember which one. But if you get a big piece of foam like this in a thing that you unbox. Uh, actually, this one came with a table. I remember now. Uh, this is great to keep you from denting your airplane. So what I'm going to do now is slide that under there. Uh, here comes my beautiful assistant. I'm going to flip it over. And I want to make sure that we get this bottom gap nice and tight too. But see that big piece of foam there keeps me from denting my airplane. And I'm going to take and just give this a drop or two right here on the bottom. And make sure we're nice and glued down here too. The goal right now is just to make sure this doesn't move while we're messing with it. And we're building our airplane. So I'm going to check out what our next step is after this. Uh, step two is going to be to assemble our rudders. So we shall do that next. Alright, cool. So now I can flip that over. We should be good and attached. And we are perfect. So now we're going to start putting our rudders on. Slide that over just a second. The NE is going to go to the outside, so you got two of these to do. Um, let me get the servo connectors untied. Question. Okay, answer. What receiver do you plan to use in that F14? Uh, I'm probably going to use a 10 channel Futaba receiver. Uh, and I want to split up the ailerons and the elevators and go on and do full flying stabs. And uh, I'd like full span flaps, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to probably use a 10 channel in here. If I can figure out how to untie this wire. <laughs> Got it! So, here we go. I'm going to go on and take and plug in my rudders. You know, don't be intimidated. I know the F-14 is a big airplane. Uh, but as far as the assembly goes, there's nothing to it. I mean... It's amazing how easy these airplanes are today to put together. As somebody that's been in the hobby a very long time, the world has definitely changed. So we need to make sure our little wires get put down in here and are not going to be affected by our rudders. Anybody interested in that new... Uh, 64? Sure. So let me see. We got this clip right here. I'm going to unclip it. There's a little white clip here on the rudder. And what I think I'm going to do is stuff the wires down inside the fuselage a little bit more and then clip it back in. Just because it's kind of tight in here. What you looking for? Yeah, Oh no, I can see the fan, I'm on top of it. But uh, the clip just kept it from falling down in there. Mm -hmm. But now I can take and actually shove that whole connector down into the airplane and make me some more room. You want to say they had to use all 10 channels they ran out? <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, I'm just getting my wires in here. The other thing, take your time putting these airplanes together, you know. Um, you want to make sure that you don't pinch any wires as you're doing this. And uh, like I said, just take some time to route your stuff as you put it in here. Like that. It's like watching paint dry right now though, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I'm move the airplane for just a second. Live assembly, nothing like it, huh? Uh oh. I checked the servo. Yeah. You will not have the servo. Papa's poking his head around the corner right now. He 
said check the servos, and I normally do that as I'm doing this. Um, I'll do it on the next one because this one's already all in there. But we can definitely do that. Good call, old papa. And I'm sorry that this isn't just going super fast right now. Okay, get this clip. It's the clip popper in it. There we go. I'm going to pop that out of there. I think the clip was just for shipping because there was no way that was going to fit under there. There we go. It goes right down now. Aha. So I guess in your airplane, there's this little white clip, and it didn't say anything about it in the instructions, but if you'll pop that out of there, the, the rudder goes right in. So it's hitting on it. It's like magic. So now, like I said, we want to make sure all our wires are all seated and out of there, and they are now. Now we need to find our screws. Should be these right here, I believe. PA3 eights. Nice thing is they label everything in here. Elevator, elevator, elevator. Uh, lots of screws. And if anyone has questions while he's putting this together, For feel sure, free to ask. For sure, let us know. This should be countersunk. Those are all elevator screws. Is there more screws somewhere that I'm missing? I think that's all of them. Okay. Eight millimeters. Just making sure I get the right screws out here, guys. Anybody get to see the Artemis rock, rocket this week? I know we got to see old Scott Settle and some of those guys were over here. We watched it from our front yard. Pretty dang cool. Okay, I'm just going to get these started. I don't want to take them all the way down until we get them all in. Hey, you're using a beaten screwdriver. What? What are you talking about? I would <laughs> never do that. Yeah, I uh, bought this screwdriver this week, and I love it. I have arthritis in my fingers, and something that I've always had a hard time with is screws. So that has actually been a lifesaver for me. Oh, I have to get it started with a regular one now. Yeah. We were up pretty late with it, watching it. There we go. Oh, I think there's one more on the other side. There is. Anybody get a chance to get out and fly this week? We've been trying all week long to get out to the field. We went on uh, Wednesday, and the weather just was not cooperating with us this week. But tomorrow is looking like it's going to be perfect. So we're hoping to do some flying tomorrow. But I wanted to do some today. But it did not happen. Oh, we wanted to see a servo tested. Servo tested. So, yeah, we have that. So, this is something I like to do normally on a model before I put it together. Uh, and just because we were live, I didn't do it on all the control surfaces tonight. Let me, uh, Lori, would you grab me a battery out of that drawer right over there? Uh, 2S, there's a 2S life pack in there that'd be perfect. So, this is our uh, GT Power uh, servo checker. Um, 
right there on top. One of the, yep, that one right there. Perfect. Thank you. So this is the GT Power Servo Checker. Um, works really well. This is something we have on our website. But something I like to do before I put these airplanes together normally is test everything before I put it together. So you plug your battery in. You tell it if it's an analog or a digital servo. We're going to go digital. Uh, we're going to go in linear mode, normal. And uh, now we can plug our servo in. Uh, yellow to the signal wire on the connector. Aha! And then we can actually work the servo right here before we put it in the airplane. Just make sure it's okay. You know, it's a lot easier to replace a servo if it, there is an issue when you're putting it together before you screw it all on the airplane than afterwards. So this is something that's a real easy way to check it. You can just put that on there and turn your servos. Uh, it also comes in handy if you're just trying to adjust something on the fly and you don't want to fire up the airplane just to do that. So, there we go. So I'm going to start getting this next side put in. I'm going to go on and pull this off this time. Since that was kind of giving us problems last time. So this one has an extra wire. One is for the uh, landing lights from the look of it on the top of the pin. They aren't labeled, so I think that they're going to both be solid. If you had a flashing, it would have to be labeled differently. So plug those in. Red to red, black to black. Don't ever hook your lights in backwards. I made that mistake once, too. Well, they, they burn up pretty much instantly if you do that. So definitely take your time to line your wires up correctly while you're hooking the tail in. I know this seems like a simple thing for a lot of the guys that build them all the time, but remember your servo connections are uh, always yellow to yellow or yellow to white or white to white in how you do that. So if that makes sense. So right now I'm just pushing all the wires down in the fuselage. Does it have a landing light? Does it have a landing light? Yes, there's a landing light in the back. And there's lights on the nose wheel. Um, there's lights all over this airplane. Definitely check it out. There's tons of videos of this airplane out on the internet now. Uh, it is uh, one of our most popular models of all time, I would have to say. Right now, like I said, I'm just stuffing all the uh, wires in here. You're making me hungry. Making you hungry? <laughs> I'm talking about hot wives. What am I missing over here? I was going to say, I don't have nothing to do with a pot pie right now. Okay, so, again, getting all the wires in here. That one went a little bit quicker now that I knew what I was doing, as it always is. It's like magic. That's right. The other thing I like about uh, assembling... Don't call it building, people will yell at me. But assembling airplanes on this foam stuff is like when I'm doing these screws here, so I don't lose them, I can just stab them into the foam like this. And then they don't go running across the room on me. They'll stay right there where they are. What's your most popular plane? Ooh. Ooh. I'm not 100% sure. The 8037 is pretty hard. That one's been very popular, yeah. The F-14, this has been very popular over time. The A-4. A-4 is a good one. I, I don't know which one's our most popular airplane. F-15. Uh, sport jets are always really hot. The, the Avanti did really, does really good. Uh, the Vulcan's been very popular lately. It's hard. You know, the, the cool thing is, is we have something for everyone. So, you know, um, you know, this is really cool to a lot of guys, but some guys are very intimidated by it and, and aren't interested in it. But the cool thing is, is we also do sports jets. So, you know, just because I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to push through this. Aha, uh -huh, like that. Instead of tearing it up. Now, this inside screw is going to be fun. Because <laughs> I don't think my screwdriver is going to fit in there. I do. I need. I think I got one. Oh, I don't. It was underneath you. There. 
need a screwdriver that's a little shorter here. I wasn't ready for that. Oh, you can do like a little chunky chunky thing. Little chunky thing there. Chunky 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 thing. Like I said, I had to get a shorter screwdriver. My long one won't fit in there. Is it Phillips? Yep, Phillips. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Look at that. Behind every good man is a wife rolling her eyes, right? Going, hey. I'm gonna have to do this one later, just because we've spent enough time putting rudders on. I'm gonna go in and suck these couple down and I'll come back and do that one. After you, woo! Ta-da! Good, okay. I like these. These uh, screwdrivers that are powered, James got me into this, and so I went out and picked one up. This one just goes down to a certain torque and then stops, and it just doesn't tear a lot of stuff up. But like I said, I have arthritis in my hand, and man, that is great for the RC uh, box. All right, let's see. What's up, everybody? What is up, and welcome, I should say, folks. All right, it says we're gonna do our elevator halves next. So this is gonna probably be something that's easier to do with the airplane hanging over the table. This is once again why I really like that foam block. So if you get a big piece of foam or something in a, a package, don't throw it away, man. It comes in really handy for stuff like this. So I really like uh, this one too. We actually have these on Motion RC also. This is our uh, um, urge stands. And this is the Ultra Stands. We do have these in stock at Motion RC. Um, this is normally the stand I build everything on, but I kind of figured the F-14 with this large section wasn't going to fit in it, and it doesn't. So this worked out really well for this. But normally that's the one I use for everything. So let's figure out now. We've got to put our elevator halves on. I want to double check and make sure I do this correctly. So the elevator screw horns come in a little baggie all to themselves and it looks like we get to assemble these Ta -da -ta. and then you also have two rods where'd they go I had those a second ago here they are so these two rods right here now these are what's going to be keyed into the airplane for the elevator halves to rotate on they have a, a ball bearing back here mounted into the tail that these actually clip into and slide. I'm not sure if I have a way I can show you that realistically right now. But there's a little metal rod, like I said, it goes into the side and Maybe it's some got zoom. some zoom. There you go. I'm going to just leave it sitting right there while I'm getting all these other parts out. There we go. Uh, the other thing that's always great hold it over here is a magnetic tray that is a very handy thing to have because right now I can take my parts for the elevator dump them out in my little tray like so Ta -da. and now I don't lose any of my parts now most of this stuff is aluminum so it doesn't work in the magnetic tray right now but uh, it's still a good place to put everything and where did I put the elevator hat that oh there they are Go. Oh, still zoomed out. Here we go. Let me get these out now. And we shall get these put together. Mm. Which Let's tank see. is that on the table behind you? Which tank is it? Oh, all right, tanks. We love our tanks. This is my Panzer. Uh, real quick, since we got a question from the audience, I'll let you zoom in on this. But this is our Hinglong. Uh, Panzer, we have these in stock uh, here at Motion RC, but I have custom painted mine. So this is something we might do one night is maybe an airbrushing video on a tank. Uh, I added the chains all over it, and uh, like I said, this is the stock tank aside from the chains, and then I just weathered it all over it. So you can see there's rust, and there we go, Lori's hanging with me. Did all the rusting on it, though, the, the tracks. Yeah, but this is a hang long. 
uh, available here at Motion RC. These come right out of the box, ready to run, smoke system. They're really cool paint. I really like them. I've had that one a while. I actually bought that one myself before I worked here. Uh, so, on the elevator halves, the next step for the F14 is we're going to go on and put our little metal tabbies that uh, hold the uh, control rods. As you can see, it's, it's very tight, but they do push in. But there's this little metal, there you go, Lori, zooming in. There's this little metal tab that we need to push in and then put our screws in for this. So I'm going to set that on the table and uh, we're going to screw that all together. So there's three, three, two, two, two. And I'm missing a screw, which I might have dropped when I put it on the table. Oh, you know what's going to be easier, though? First, before we screw this on, let's put our ball link on. So our ball link goes to the inside. So we take our little screw. Take our little ball link. Sorry, I'm trying to look at how this ball link goes on here. It goes like that. And it should be. Aha, I figured it out. Okay. So, the way this ball link goes is you put the screw, and I'll get Lori to zoom this in here in a second, but this goes in here like that. And then you take your little nut. Here like this. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. I need a little. Uh oh, left an airplane in the way. What did I do with it? There it is. Aha. That's just the foam that's underneath the airplane. You're hearing popping. That white foam doesn't hold up to much. There we go. Yeah, like I said, uh, we checked out the Artemis rocket the other night, though, and uh, I've really enjoyed looking on Facebook. I've seen uh, some of our RC buddies came all the way to Florida for the event. Like I said, we walked out in the front yard and checked that out, but that was absolutely amazing. Very cool to see we're going back to space. Ah, okay. I was wondering, why is there only two? Ah, because there's only two screws back here. Uh -huh. But uh, very cool. Something that I was really big into when I was growing up was uh, NASA. So I went to uh, space camp as a kid. And then I was also a NASA aerospace scholar, which sounds really fancy, but uh, there was like 50 students selected to go to NASA and do a week-long project up there. It was a lot of fun. And uh, so NASA has always been something that's really close to my heart. So it's really cool to see that we're going back to the moon. And now they're going to be setting up a base there. So it's crazy to think. Maybe my little kid Skip can be an astronaut one day. Okay, Laurie, let's get up here and let's zoom in on this. I got to put together while we've been talking here. Uh, <laughs> she's going to zoom in here. So now you can actually see how this works. So very strong. This is an aluminum L with two screws that go down in here. And then this ball link, what you do to put that together is there's a long, here, hang on, I got another one right here. There's a, there's this little bitty screw. And that little bitty screw goes in from this side through the ball and onto the uh, lock nut on the other side. And that's what holds that ball link on. Now we can come over here to the airframe. We've already stuck our little rod in. Now that can slide in there. Now the last thing to do is there is a set screw that goes in from the top and holds our little pin in. There's actually two of them. Uh, and I've got to figure out, it's not in here. What is number I? I is a screw, P13, P3 by eight millimeter. Hmm. I 
which I think is this one right here. Oh, there are four of them. That would probably be correct then. Let's see here. I need to find me a screwdriver that's going to be thin enough to go down in there. There's one right here. I'm going to go ahead and slide my elevator half back off. What this is going to do is this screw is going to go down and there's actually a knurl on both of these cut out. Let's see. She's going to zoom it. Zoom it. So there's a, a knurl right here and right here. And this screw is going to go down through there and land on the top of that knurl. And that's going to hold that elevator half in on both sides. So that's what we're going to do now is get those in the airplane. started. I'm going to try and finish that with my electric one because it's kind of long. There we go. Got that one started. I always like to start it with a regular screwdriver and then I can hammer them on with this guy. Boom. Boom. Now that should be able to go on there. And just like that, nice and free. Now, we're also going to need to put our elevator push rods on. Now, I normally like to fire my model up first, but I know that this is going to be annoying if I don't go on and put these on here because it's going to be sitting here bobbing the whole time. So, we're going to go on and grab these and stick them on. We're probably going to have to adjust this after we fire the model up and center our servos uh, mechanically. But for now, we're going to go on and put these on just for uh, the fact of the matter. So let's see, uh, elevator push rods. And so the other cool thing in all the manuals, this, this is actually kind of important. It's actually, it's very important. I'm gonna push these out of the way for just a second. And I wanna make sure you guys understand this. There's some of our models that this is like very crucial on. Some of it doesn't matter, but in the manuals, it's gonna tell you what holes to use. So all of our manuals are laid out this way, but there's a push rod and it tells you what hole to use. So like on the aileron, aileron, flat, flat, the, the elevator is right here, elevator. This is the one we're doing right now. So the elevator, it's gonna go from the third hole on the plastic horn here on the elevator, and then it's gonna go into our ball link. But you wanna make sure you're using the correct hole because that's how much leverage the airplane has on that servo to that horn. And that's very crucial on some of our models. So make sure you're actually doing it per the manual. So on the F-14, we're gonna to go to the third hole. And sometimes these are too tight, and I'm gonna show you a trick if it is. Oh, nope, this one's not tight. But I'm still gonna show you the trick. <laughs> if you'll take your uh, hobby knife, if you have a hobby knife, one of these, if it's just too tight to get your servo horn in there, Sometimes there's a little burr. If you'll take one of these hobby knives, they're the pointy ones, just stick it in there. I'll do it on this outside one so it's not hurting the hole I'm actually using. Uh, and you just spin them just a little bit. You'll clear that hole out and that'll pass right through there very easily. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is, the way these work is we take our little white clip, we're gonna put that through the servo horn and then put our clip on and clip it. So here we go. Do this. Hmm. Yeah, they told me to put the ball link on this way. Mm hmm. Funny. Mm -hmm. I uh, <laughs> just noticed that the picture in the uh, manual tells you to put the ball link on the wrong side, so I gotta flip it over. Whoops. Let me flip this around real quick. That's some of the exciting stuff of building one of these live. It's no big deal. So the ball link needs to face in towards the fuselage if you're putting one of these together yourself.
No biggie. Hmm? Oh, you know what? And it actually has two holes. It goes in the top for you. Cool. So all I'm doing is flipping that around real quick. No biggie. Any other questions thus far from our viewers? It's always been a very popular model here at Motion, and uh, so I'm excited to have it finally. Like I said, it's one of the few airplanes that we offer that I have never flown, so I expect to change that very shortly. So, like I said, all I did is the uh, ball needed to be on the other side, facing in towards the fuselage. And I'm going to go on and snap my ball link on out here. Slide that on now. Now we can go third hole in, uh -huh. hmm. like so. And we're, like I said, we're probably going to have to pop these off and adjust them once I actually fire the model up for the first time. But for now, so we don't have that elevator half set in there flopping, I'm going to go and put it in. Now, what did I miss? There's got to be another screw somewhere that holds the actual elevator half on. Ah, I see what I did. Now, here it is right here. Good Lord, where's the little grub screw at? So, I didn't notice it until I put it on there, but there's this little tiny silver ring. And there's two little bitty screws right here. Let's go on and open this up. I'm going to dump these in here. that. Don't lose them. So these little bitty screws go in here. Uh -huh. So um, I don't know how I'm going to show this part, but there's a hole cut out right here on the top of the elevator. Let's see. Let's see if we can get in here. I was like, what holds the elevator half on? I figured it out now. Let's see. So we're looking right there. So the bar right now is loose. You can see the elevator just goes in and out like this. So the way this is going to work is this little guy right here. You can see there's a screw here, set screw. We're going to put that in there. And now we're going to slide our elevator half in on top of that. And now we can push our little collet over to where it's tight. And we're going to take a screwdriver now and tighten this up. Now. Something I'm going to do, and I would recommend you do it also, is put some Loctite on there. So there it is. That holds that in there nice and tight. But uh, I had some Loctite around here. I don't know where it's ended up. So I'm definitely going to go back and put a drop of Loctite on that. I'm not going to go look for my Loctite right now just for the fact of we're all hanging out here. But that's how that goes in there, and that holds that. But like I said, I'm going to get some Loctite in a minute. You can see that works good. Oh, here comes Lori. Look at that. She's my savior. So we're going to take and put just a little dab. You don't need a lot. We're not going to soak it or nothing. I'm going to try and do this without even taking it off. I just want a little dot. There we go. A little dot of it. Try not to get it on the plastic. Loctite eats plastic. There we go. And now we can take that. And tighten it up now that we've got that little drop of Loctite on it. There we go. Nice and secure and not going to move. So now we need to do the other side. Ta -da 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 -da. There it is. And we just do it the same way we just did it. So this time I'm going to go on and take these two screws. This should go rather quickly. Oh, yeah. Share with the class. What are we laughing about? Uh, RCM, Michael. Huh? Is, is this really live? Is this really live? Yeah, it <laughs> is, Dave. You can't tell. 
What's up, Dave Marshall? Your ears must have been ringing. I was talking about you. He was just in Florida this week. He came down with old Scott Settle to uh, experience Artemis and didn't even come visit me because he's a punk. No, he's a good dude. You should go check him out. He's got a lot of great videos. No, still driving the Dodge. Next year, Dad, I expect you to be driving a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have several Ford vehicles, just not the truck. If that counts, probably not. Look at how much faster you go after you've done it once. I drive a Ford. That's right. Lori, Lori's got a flex. She'd be flexing. Cutting my head off. That's okay. I don't need it. Ah! Well, like I said, I know what I'm doing this time. This one's going real fast. Said, put it on backwards again. <laughs> it never ceases to fail. Uh, I put it on backwards again. <laughs> it's real. Uh, what was I holding that with last time? Is it this? Yeah, there we go. Ha ha. <laughs> These little bitty things, my hands don't do too good with them. Any plans on weathering this one? Oh, definitely. There's always plans for weathering. Definitely. I'm going to leave it stock for now uh, before we shoot the product video with it. But then definitely, uh, I've always wanted this airplane. I haven't figured out what paint job yet. We're kind of leaning towards the Jolly Rogers on this one. But I'm thinking I'm going to do a full repaint on this airplane. Just because it's one I've always personally wanted. Oh, no, don't fall to the floor. That would have been hard to find. All right, magnetic screw. Used my bench craft magnetizer on there. Now my screwdriver is a magnet. All right, here we go. Oh, darn. You know what? I'm going to actually drip my Loctite on this before I stick it in there this time. be a little easier. Yeah, I mean... He said, we're trying this a little different tonight. Um, you know, I just thought, why not come and hang out? We finally got the new shop set up to where uh, I can just kind of go live whenever I want. Super easy. I had to put it together one way or the other, so I might as well hang out here with you guys. Was the thought. And uh, share the experience. Jane says you're crushing it. Crushing it? Am I, am I doing it good? The boss man's in here. You've done a little over an hour, but you're still good. It's okay. I kind of figured I wouldn't be able to do this one in just an hour. And maybe we'll do this over two nights or something. You know what I mean? We don't have to do the whole thing tonight. Let's see. I'm going to put this one in here. Boom. Turn that up. Turn it up. Turn down for what? Let's see, I need to get that into the third hole. Maybe when we're all done here, I'll lift this up and show you my finished product. Like I said, the uh, elevator hatch, we'll have to adjust it once we get it plugged in and we fire up the receiver. But if I don't put the little clips on right now, uh, it's going to fight us all night. <laughs> yeah, they're fighting us. Hey, uh. Hey, uh. Go to your home.
Yeah, that's probably what we're going to do. I think we're going to assemble it. I think that wiring it right now would take too long. Yeah, we'll hang out. See if we can get the wings on it, though, so we can get the full experience. Darn it. I think it could be assembly then, and then you can do all the electrical in there. Yeah, something like that. The little elevator thing. There we go. Ha ha. Ha ha. Come on, Dare. Come on. Ha ha. Got it. Ha ha. So there we go. Okay, so now I can pick this up. If you want to grab the camera real quick, Lori, we'll show them kind of what we got done there. Look how big this thing gets. <laughs> Let me get a hold of it. Here we go. So now we get in here. Oop, forgot about the things. There we go. So there you go. That's the elevator assembly. There we go. So <laughs> it's not no nothing difficult here. Just take your time. Uh, so definitely the ball links go towards the inside of the airplane and then you've got the link that comes down and hits the third hole from the inside uh, right there. And then tilt it down so we can see that uh, drug screen. Oh yeah, okay. So this is that little silver thing that I was talking about. This is what actually holds the elevator in. It's a collet with a little grub screw in it. And I went on ahead and put a drop of Loctite on that. Uh, if you don't have Loctite though, the uh, kit glue that it comes with, you could always put just a little drop of that on the end of it and then screw it in there and it'll act like Loctite doing that. And like I said, the foam. This is saving my airplane doing this. Because if you bang this around on the table like this, you can tear your airplane all up. You don't want to do that. Yeah, because you want it to stay pretty. So let's flip it over now. I mean, look at how big this thing's getting. It's a big model. Yeah, like I said, with that rocking around on the table, it would have tore that all up, so. Do the wings move like a real one? Yes, they do. Uh, yes, so for the guys that are just getting in, I um, guess we'll show that again real quick. Uh, they have a ball bearing right here. We're about to be putting the wings on, but this ball bearing allows the wing to sweep back and forth. So, on to the next step of our assembly tonight, guys. I believe we're going to be putting the wings on. The nice thing is the wings do come already with all the servos pre-mounted pre and all your servo horns are also done right out of the box. So it's amazing the amount of time this saves on uh, assembling. All right, let's get into the top of the fuselage. We're going to start looking at putting our wings together. So. I'm going to use this one so we don't have to wait for me to unscrew all these. That one doesn't have a screw in it. Uh, it, it's just in an awkward spot. I'll have to do it at the end. Get the... Uh, off. Take your time. Once again, don't ever force anything when you're taking your planes apart. That's how you tear stuff up. Uh, I've got the screw still sitting in here, so here's the top of the wing plate. We're going to go and set that off to the side while we start doing this part. Now, uh, Let's see, there's some more stuff here. This is an amazing airplane on the inside of this. The amount of uh, engineering that goes into this airplane is just blows my mind. Like I said, uh, I remember back in the 90s, just thinking of something like this would have been like, what? And now they come out of the box like this. It's just insane. So I'm getting the uh, protective covers peeled off and then we're gonna start looking at installing our wings. Yes, they do go in and out. They sweep just like the real thing. Now, Lori, let's get them a shot of this wing plate for the guys that have never seen this before and how well this is designed. Let me pull this over here. I'm going to flip it up and let you zoom in on that. But there's the wing plate itself. You can see it's all machined aluminum. 
All your wires are pre-ran there in the top. You can see they're bundled up very well. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so let's see if we can get the wing halves on and then we'll pick it up again and show you how that ends up working. Uh, da -da 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 -da, get over here to my manual. Uh, you got a bolt. And I'm just trying to make sure I assemble this correctly. So we got to take our plate loose. This is again one of those spots that I'll probably use Loctite on um, as we go. So the wing half, after you take this loose, this is the plate on the top of the wing half, uh, we're going to go in and slide that down here on this. And as you can see, that just ball bearings on there like that. Just like the real airplane, now the wings can sweep from in to out. I'm going to be careful not to bang anything right now, but just kind of showing you that. Put these screws so I don't lose any of them. Put that one back in there. Yeah, there you go. So it's on a ball bearing that sweeps very freely, nothing to grab it, just like that. And it says right here on the top of the wings, as we cable management is going to be our biggest thing here. But these wires are going to need to run down and be in front of these stickers. They have stickers in here to tell you anywhere in front of this, you're good with your uh, wiring. So anyway, I'm going to unhook the wires. We're going to kind of run them over there for now. And uh, put them in this clip. screwdriver to open my clip up with. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. We need to make sure that we got it to where when they're extended, our wires aren't going to get pinched. And then when they're up, they're out of the way. Nice. All right. Now, I may have to pop this back off looking at how this is laid out though. Because this is going to be on this side. Uh -huh. Like that. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Now, sorry, like I said, this one's just a little bit different than any model I've ever put together, so I'm definitely having to follow the instructions to the T. So we need our screws, which are these for the wing plate. So the wing plate has special screws just for it. Here they are. Now there's two longer ones and a whole bunch of shorter ones. I believe the longer ones are going to be for our push rods. A double check and a firm. Go ahead and double check this. It should be just like so. Mm. <laughs> Is this exciting, Lori? Oh, no. Got my uh, Dubro Allen keys. These have been a lifesaver. I just got these in. And uh, I love these things. I've always had the L-shaped ones, and uh, they just sent me these, and I've been really digging these. They're available on Motion RC. So I'm going to test fit everything before I actually Loctite it. I want to make sure I have this all correct, but I believe that should be... Wow, those are tight. The uh, wing sweep mechanism. I don't know if you can actually turn this when they're not hooked on. Okay. I don't want to force it. So now the little plate goes right here on top. Like I said, I'm going to figure it out on this one as we go. And then uh, we'll come back and do the other side together again. There 
we go. And now we have six screws that go in from the top. And then a nut. And I'm going to pick this up and show you what it looks like after it's assembled correctly. said just kind of checking in. Looks like Lori's typing away to everybody in the comments. I'm dropping links. Dropping links. Like I said, I'm going to probably Loctite all this stuff, but just trying to get it together right now. Filling that everywhere. <clears throat> Grab our little thing here. Aaron Phillips is fired up. Yeah. The tires like the foam. That's right, like the foam. Let's like this foamer. All right, so I've got this wing installed. I'll pick it up and show it real quick what it looks like. And, uh, then we'll get the other side done real quick. But uh, let's see here. Just trying to figure out how to hold it, Lori. All right, come on in. So you've got the five screws here that are all Allen keys into these aluminum receiver points. And then your ball bearing is mounted right through here. And then you have a linkage that comes from this servo arm out to the wing, and this is what actually pushes the wing in and out. Uh, I tried to move it a second ago, but these are very tight, and I don't want to end up stripping it out trying to move it. But uh, I'm sure once we get this fired up, we can move those wings momentarily. But let me get the other wing put on real quick. I might be able to do it with maybe a servo checker, just to make the wings move for everybody here in a minute. But in the meantime... I still have to do all the wiring here and get it all ran up in here nicely. But for the time being, let's get the other wing on. We're very close to having the airplane at least assembled to where we can look at it. There'll still be a bunch of wiring left to do. That's fine. Uh, I haven't figured out exactly where these little plates go. Ah, I see where these plates go. I missed a piece. There's a little plate that has to go in here. Hang on one second. I missed one piece. <clears throat> I know, gosh, at least pay attention, Wes, jeez, yep, okay, I did miss this, so there's this little aluminum bar right here, I was having a problem seeing it in the instructions, but I see it now, so you take this one here, the plate goes across here, it's, it's a strengthening bar, it's to hold everything nice and tight, we get that one there, Hey now, there we go. And that little bar goes like that. And we'll get a better shot of that here in just a second. This airplane is absolutely amazing to me. Make I said, sure the wing is good at least before the flap gets activated. Oh yeah. Uh, the aileron is just going to be where, or the flap right now is going to be where it is until I have a chance to put a servo checker on this and move it. Because like I said, I don't want to stress it by pushing it too hard. What's up? Oh. Lori was like, ah, and I was like, what happened? She was like, my neck popped. <laughs> There's that. All right, let's get the other wing on real quick. This one should go a little faster, just like everything else. Once you've done one once, it goes really fast. I'm going to put that over there so I don't lose it. Uh, wing half. 
once again. Get that on there. Oh, let's pick this up over here. And we might as well unhook our wires again. This worked out really well. Slide that in. I mean, before I actually hit the wiring on here, but I mean, just there's how it looks, though. Like I said before, how the uh, wire, the uh, wing actually goes in and out, just like that. Isn't that just the coolest thing? So I've always wanted this airplane. It's just such a cool, cool airplane. Said I'm going to put my wires in those clips and make sure that when they're extended, they're not bunched up, which they are fine right there. Perfect. Now we can start screwing all our top on. So there's one longer screw out of the uh, little black uh, Allen headed screws. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I see over in the white, maybe. Anyway, there's one that's longer. That one is the one that actually connects the uh, <coughs> servo control rod to the wings. So you mean mixed ailerons as ailerons when the wings are swept. So, like I said, uh, if you want to check out a really cool video, RC Geek, uh, Chris Wolf, super awesome dude, he has a video on setting his F-14 up where it's just like the real one. The flaps, both of the aileron and the flaps drop whenever you've got the wings extended and uh, you've got tailorons when you're landing and when the wings are swept, the ailerons don't do anything. Uh, it's only the tail that works. And I plan on setting mine the same way. Uh, like I said, we're probably not gonna get the wiring done tonight just because this is gonna be a very long video. But this is something I plan on doing with you guys all the time now. I'm set up to where I can go live. This is really easy to come hang out. Uh, it doesn't get any more real than what you're seeing here. I'm making my mistakes right in front of you and learning with you. Maybe something that you won't make a mistake on doing when you're building yours, hopefully, this way. But I, I plan on doing mine that way, where when the wings are swept, the ailerons turn off. Uh, when they're out, the ailerons work. Uh, and the tail goes to normal. So I'm going to set mine out that way, but there's several great videos on how to do it, but uh, like I said, RC Geek has a really good one on it, and he teaches you how to do it very well. Hmm. That's interesting. I am missing some screws. Or did I put too many in there? Both could be possible. Ah, I see another piece that I messed up on. This is the hard part about doing this live. Uh, so, the uh, wings, I need to take them back off. There's these little shims right here, and I missed this when I was putting them on. I'm going to leave this as it is for now, but these shims actually go on the bottom and the top. Uh, in the manual, I missed this little bit here, but... Uh, I'm going to definitely have to do that again. Supposed to have four. And then... Two. Hmm. Well, might as well take that back off and fix this side right now, though. Well, we're not very far. Hmm? Are the EVS outrunners? Uh, I believe they are still outrunners <laughs> in the F-14. Yes. These are still outrunners at the moment. Uh, you never know. It could be something we update in the future, though. But it gets around really good on what it has. I've watched this airplane fly many times, and I'm always blown away at how nice it flies. I feel like I am in need of two other screws. I'm trying to figure this out. Aha! There it is. I see what I did. Aha! 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 
Steve the Nice Guy? No. Definitely not, Lori. I would definitely never mess anything up, especially when building it live. Never. Never. Okay. So, I missed that little ring. I'm going to go back and put that on. Uh, C. Washer. Where'd they go? I just got them in my hand. Right here. Ha ha ha. Oops. Yes. Washer goes on the top and the bottom of the wing. Hopefully I can still lift this off without having to take the uh, ball leg off. And I can, good. Awesome. So it says that one of these washers goes on the bottom. Hmm. Like that. And then you slide the wing cap on. And then another washer goes on the top. Aha! Now we put our plate on. Aha! I missed that part. But now, we've got her, and she is fixed up now. Everybody loving this? If you ever want to uh, challenge yourself, turn on a camera and uh, put an airplane together. <laughs> Very cool though. Alright, this time I got this. The bar goes in. And then there's these two big old plastic screws that go into the uh, plastic. Plastic. Got this and this. to the point where I can pick this thing up and we can see it in all of its glory. It's Papa's favorite phrase. In all its glory. <clears throat> okay, cool. And that goes in there. And that goes in There we go. And then the nut. Like I said, I'll uh, pop the other side off and fix that where I didn't put that on there, but I'm going to do it in a little bit. When you guys aren't having to watch me anymore. What did I do with the wrench? There it is. Tighten this up. That should still have play, but that's good. Okay, so that gets the wings on. So the part I missed is there are, if you'll come up and zoom in, we're going to pick the airplane up too. Mm -hmm. So there are these little rings right here. And I missed this when I was putting mine together, so hopefully I can save you a little time. There we go. I'll put it up in the blue so you can see it. There's these little washers right here. And one goes on both sides of the wing. Now let's pick the wing up and talk about it now that it's all put together. So you can see. There we go. This is the stage dog. It's in the middle. Yep. So now we got the wing all together. I've got my servo wires just clipped in right here and right here for now. We're going to run those cable managed all up in here. We'll make sure nothing can get in the wing swings. There's also these bars right here. Now, something I missed when I was doing it, but I fixed it now. You've got the little black-headed uh, Allen keys on this side, but then it has a uh, kind of aggressive wood screw-looking uh, screw that goes up here. So, when you're putting this bar in, the one that goes into the plastic up here looks more like a wood screw. You can see the silver heads on both sides. Uh, and then, once again, uh, lock nut on the top, and that gets those wing halves all put together. So, there we have it. This thing's getting big, isn't it? Now, 
Like I said, I'm going to fix that later. Let's just stick this all together for now, just so you can see the airplane as it sets on the table. Uh, we're going to kind of call this the end for a little bit. Now, there's also another piece that has to glue on up here for the canopy, but I don't have it out here yet. And I think I'm going to wait to glue this on until I finish the wing halves and get in the programming. But there's actually the uh, canopy hatch. Let me get this. They leave all this off so you can finish all your wiring in here is what this is for. But this is the canopy hatch. It glues in at the very end. There's what it would look like right there. Uh, but we're going to leave that loose for now because I still need to get in here and do the wiring. But... As you can see, if we slide this all in here, just for a moment, give you the full look. And uh, like I said, maybe I can find just the wing sweep and do it on a servo checker. Uh, but for the time being, let's just get a look at this thing. Bad unit. Oh, baby. Dudes. Holy cow, look at this thing. It got big. Whoa. There it is, though. This is, this is the assembly. Like I said, I've got to glue this one piece in still yet and then put my four screws back in. But I'm going to go in and hold off until I finish all the wiring in here because this is going to be a lot easier with it. But look at how big this thing is once you get it all together. I love the finish. Uh, it's a typical three-wing airplane right out of the box. The uh, overall finish of the foam is beautiful. Everything's painted, uh, as you expect from Motion RC. Yeah. You want to get any quick little any shots? Anybody want to see anything specific on this? Like I said, I got to do the wing. There you go. Look at that. I'm gonna have to do the the wiring on this in a separate video, but there it is. Man. Awesome. Huh. It got heavy. Thing's a chunk. Ta-da. But yeah, this is awesome. So, uh, just to show you what I was talking about real quick, I accidentally clamped that. Uh -huh. So this little piece uh, is to glue in after it's all said and done. Holy cow, I got the canopy really tight. But the reason they do that is so you can get, there's a trough right in here. Uh oh, I think my screw's kind of set. I might have to unhook them again. Can it fit in an SUV? Oh yeah, with the wings folded, it's not going to be an issue going in an SUV. Remember, the wings are all the way out right now but they sweep all the way back. So it gets a lot smaller with them, but swept back. And I just don't know if I have a way to sweep them without, give me just a second. I might be able to put them back right now with the servo checker. Just give me one second. Are the inlets The inlets. Uh, they are cladded in plastic. We can get a shot of that. Give me just a second. Give me one second and I'll pick the airplane back up and we can show you those inlets. Lori, let's see. So the inlets, so it's foam all the way up here, but if you can see the outside of it all the way around, this is all plastic right here. You getting a good shot of that? Yeah, this is all plastic around the inlets. So you're not going to bang these into stuff and put dents in them. Um, they have thought about that. The nose cone is fiberglass, so you're not going to... Oops. Let me see here. Pull this off real quick. So the nose cone is not foam. I'm going to get you... Oh, you're right there. Okay, here we go. It's foam, but then it's got fiberglass. Do you see this? This is fiberglass all the way around this. So this isn't going to get damaged from your fingers or bumping it into stuff. This is hard plastic uh, with the foam insert on the inside. And that just locks in like so. Now, what I'm going to see real quick is if I can find what they've got the uh, 
wing sweep mechanism labeled as if I can wing sweep right here. Wing sweeping. Okay, let's see if we can operate the wing sweep real quick from the bench. I don't see why it would be an issue. They should just be standard servos. I'm going to show you if like, you can do this. They said they're more like landing gear type signals. Enter, linear, normal. If they're, if they're landing gear style, they might not work with this. Oh, look, the lights come on when I did that. Are the ordinances so decorated? Oh! Look at that. Hey, wait, you want to come back over here? Yeah. They work. I don't know why all the lights came on when I plugged that in. It's not hurting anything, though. I'm just feeding power through this. So there's all the lights also on. But uh, here you go. So they do work just like a landing gear. It's all the way out or all the way in. So this is in the wing swept mode. And I guess I could pick it up real quick. So the gentleman that was asking about the SUV, uh, look at how much smaller the model is now with the wing swept. You know, it's about the width of me now with the wings swept. So you would have no issue getting this in the back of a car or a uh, SUV. And then uh, I'm trying to hold this and do it. Let me see here. Do you want, here, let me see. I got it, I got it, I got it. You ready? Yep. How cool is that? <laughs> it's cool, I've never seen it do it with the wing open like this before either. Trying to make sure I don't get any wires pinched right now doing this until I've got it sorted out. But let's do it one more time right up here. How cool is that? I'll never uh, get tired of seeing the crazy stuff that they're able to do in these models now. That is amazing to me. Absolutely amazing. So, yeah. There it is. Uh, that was the assembly of the F-14 Tomcat. I'm going to go on and unplug this for now. Uh, I think what we'll do, like I said, we'll come back here maybe uh, next week. And I'll give you an update on where we're at before we go fly it. Um, we have a couple other things we're going to try and get out to the field tomorrow. Uh, they're out in the car. I'd show them to you right now. But we've got the Crafty, which is the uh, ME, uh, what is it, a 163? I forget. Anyway, it's the little hand toss plane. We're going to go out and have a good time with that. Uh, we've got two Vulcans. I'm going to fly that with Jerry McGee at some point. We want to get a video of us flying those together because Vulcans are awesome. What's up? You got a question? Yes. Do you need to measure the leading edge to leading edge for setup? Correct. So, I, and I'm going to go on and preference this right now. Uh, I still need to fire up my model. I need to center both of my elevators, make sure that both of them are the same and you don't have one that's wrong. I need to set my uh, deflection of elevator to be correct because this is a full flying stab. I still need to make sure that the wing halves are the same to both sides, but they look like they are right now, just eyeballing it. They're not off by much, if any, which is going to be... Uh, I'm sure there's a way it tells you to do it in the manual, but the way I would do it just from all the airplanes I've set up in the past is I would take a string from here to a known point on your elevator and you would know it's the same distance if you did it from this side and then did it on that side. It'd be the same. That's how we do it on a balsa airplane. Uh, I'm sure the manual shows a way to do it. I haven't checked yet, so I'm just being honest. Uh, that is something we need to check. I'm going to go over everything in the airplane, make sure all the electronics are set up correctly. Uh, but first we got to get power to it through a receiver and then we're going to go through and start setting all that up. This is just the assembly right now is all we're doing. All right. Uh, somebody was asking about the ordnance kit. Looked like Lori's got it. You can put it up on screen if you want. It doesn't come with the model. Right? So the ordnance does not come with the model. But if you want an ordnance kit, we do have it available here on Motion RC. I think currently it's $39.99. 99. There you go. $39.99. Uh, here in the U.S., I don't know what it is in Euros right now. We'd have to look it up on the Motion RC Europe site. But Laura, if you want to pop that up on the screen, uh, show the ordnance kit for the... Uh, the 
There you go, that works too. There's a link to the ordnance kit if you want one. Uh, it comes with all the uh, missiles and drop tanks and things for this airplane, sidewinders, uh, lots of cool stuff. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know. Is this something you'd like to see more of? Just kind of off the cuff, go live, hang out, set up an airplane, put it together, paint it, whatever. Um, you know, this is kind of something that I've been thinking about for a little while I'd like to do. Uh, we used to do it over on our old channel, and I love doing it, and guys seem to really enjoy hanging out and talking and chatting, and you get to ask me questions about anything you want. And I try and answer them all. I'm going to just set this on here for now, so I don't lose any of this. That would be bad. And uh, I'm going to get this all assembled later with the wiring. But yeah, if this is something you like, definitely let us know. I can do it more often. Uh, like I said, we got the shop set up now to where it's easy to come out here with me and Lori uh, and go live like this. Hang out, show you all the latest and greatest stuff. Anyway, that gets this one put together for now. Uh, I think we're going to meet back up maybe next week. We'll go over what we end up doing as far as radio setup. I'm going to try and put this on my new Futaba. So, uh, it's out in the car right now, or I'd show it to you, but I just got the 16IZ Futaba. Uh, I got to play with it quite a bit at the Motion RC Fly-In. Uh, had a good time with it. Uh, a couple of the Futaba reps were there. It gave me the rundown on how to use it. Uh, I've been Spectrum for years. Nothing wrong with Spectrum. It's just I've always wanted to try and do a Futaba, and now with the company I'm at, the Futaba radio works great here. So... I'm giving it a try, and so far I'm loving that 16iZ. So I'm going to set this up on there. It's uh, super easy to use so far, so I have no complaints switching over to Futaba, and it's been bulletproof thus far. So I'm going to be trying that. We'll go over it on here. Um, I think that's it, Lori. If everybody had a good time tonight, make sure you hit that like button on the way out. Tell your friends. Come hang out with us. Uh, I'll try and always notify you all before. Or I go live, put it up on here to where you can find the show uh, before we actually go live. And uh, I had a good time. So without further ado, whether it's land, sea, or air, Motion RC has something for everyone. Get out there and fly or drive and have a good time playing with your RC products with all your buddies. Hey, we're going to let y'all go. Lord, sign us out of here. Bye, guys. <laughs>